Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody had a fabulous Mother's Day. I know I did. These beautiful flowers came from my oldest son, and then my younger son made me breakfast in bed. Then I went for a massage. It was fabulous. All right, this video was going to cover stuff that happened on Saturday and Sunday. That's why it's longer than usual, but let's just get in there and get her done, shall we? Let's go. All right, we're going to start today with Charles. So we're going to stick with Charles through the last couple days. Then we'll move on to the next one, if that makes sense. So Charles put out the coronation photos. Here you have the next three generations of kings. Of course, Charles is sitting in a chair that was refurbished from 1902. Then all these other photos came out. Beautiful, beautiful photos. Um, I'm sure there were a lot more, some of which will never be released. We'll be discussing that in just a few moments. But he basically did the same thing that the queen did when she put up that picture of, you know, her, Charles, William, and George, and it made everybody upset. Some people had to go to therapy. Uh-huh. They also released a never-before-seen portrait photo, which I love. All right, moving on. It's being said that King Charles is going to visit Kenya and they're thinking he might also go to Israel and this might happen before he goes to France. Remember his trip to France was canceled due to uh, what Macron was doing with the retirement age and the, you know, the, the protests. One of the reasons why he wants to go to Kenya is that is where Queen Elizabeth was when her father died and she first ascended to the throne. Now we already know that King Charles wants to put the Commonwealth at the heart of the reign and at the heart of his reign, you know, to start. And we know he's gonna go back to France at some point. Um, and then um, they're saying that it's going to be a very poignant trip, you know, since that's what happened to his mother. For those of you who don't know, Elizabeth and Philip got there of uh, less than a week before her father died. Now, people are going, oh, the Commonwealth, and it's terrible, and they need to leave. You might want to remember that the Commonwealth is completely voluntary. If you don't want to be there, leave. I mean, I, I don't understand what people are saying about it half the time. Next up on Sunday, the king was seen driving himself to church at Sandringham. However, he did not drive himself home just there. I do not believe that Camilla was with him. He was by himself. And um, yeah, everybody's like, oh, he went to church. He's the head of the church, people. He needs to go to church. <laughs> Telling you. All right, moving on. Now this next story, remember the BBC cameraman that was booted out because he was supposedly trying to film parts of the rehearsal that were not supposed to be taped and he was in the wrong part of the Abbey. Remember that story? He is now defending himself saying that he left his position to fetch a camera kit and he inadvertently ended up in the wrong part of the Abbey and he also did not have his cell phone out. Uh, he said that uh, he's been off work since that happened, and um, yeah, he, but he said he didn't do it. Now, the article says it is very irregular for anybody, a journalist, to leave their set position, and it's very concerning thinking he's trying to film moments that are deliberately hidden from the view of the public. And BBC said, quote, while we do not comment on individuals, most of what has been reported about this story is completely incorrect. I will keep you updated. Moving on. Next up, we're gonna turn our attention to Andrew. Apparently, he was involved with the coronation photo shoot pictures, but they're claiming that those photos will probably never be released. You can understand that. Apparently, however, um, Andrew is, it's being reported, wanting to try to, I don't know, worm his way back into public life. He apparently requested pictures be taken of him in his regalia, even though he's not a working royal anymore. He requested to be a part of the photo shoot because he wanted there to be, they're saying, an official record of his being, you know, involved. 
it, he might as well give it up. He's not going to be able to return to public life. You know, sad, but it is what it is. And apparently, uh, King Charles and the rest of the family are not interested in him returning to public life. You can't blame him. All right, also still talking about Andrew. He has apparently been... Now, here's the thing. Andrew signed a lease for like 50 years on this property. So I don't think that Charles can force him out. But the property is apparently falling apart, needs lots of renovations, and Andrew doesn't have the money to fix it. But even so, he's refusing to leave the 30-room mansion because apparently Charles wants the mansion to go when they're ready to William, Catherine, and the children. And, um, you know, I, I, if he can't pay to fix it and crown money isn't going to be used to fix it, I don't understand why he doesn't take Frogmore Cottage. It's still 5,000 square feet with like five or six bedrooms. It's been completely renovated. Why not take it? I don't, I just don't understand. I mean, I get it. He doesn't want to move from a 30-room mansion to him. It's a downgrade. I, I, get, I get where he is in his brain, but if you don't have the money to fix it, then you need to go to a house that's completely renovated that's within your price range. All right, moving on. All right, we are now moving on to Catherine and William. So to start with, they appear to be out from under, if that makes sense. They're allowed to take charge and make decisions. So they've decided to start doing these videos. There's a lot of them. And it shows you what's going on behind the scenes at the coronation. It shows, uh, sorry, I had to burp. That shows Louis and Charlotte. Uh, it showed Catherine and William emerging from Kensington Palace on the historic day. It takes them throughout the whole day. I, I just, I love these kinds of clips. And I think it's great that you're finally getting to see a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff that's going on. I mean, why should other people be the only ones that are using social media? Love it. The full video is on YouTube. There you can find it. Now they didn't just do the coronation. They also showed some behind the scenes stuff at the coronation concert. They showed people sitting, they showed um, Catherine and George walking to their seats. They showed William walking so that he could give his very historic speech. I, I just love this kind of stuff. Yeah, go watch it, you guys. Now, talking about Catherine, everybody was talking about this updo that she had. She had a braided bun. It was very intricate. It was very pretty. And so searches, according to the article for it, Kate Middleton's coronation hair went up by six hundred percent i mean yeah now still talking about Catherine, she joined in with eurovision for the grand finale she joined a slew of performers there was an opening film okay and she did a short instrumental piano performance that was recorded earlier this month that was written by joe price and kojo samuel they recorded it in the Crimson Drawing Room at Buckingham Palace. Catherine looked absolutely gorgeous in her Jenny Packham one-shouldered gown. She was wearing blue for support of Ukraine, which I thought was just amazing. I don't know people, but people lost their, the, you know who lost their minds? <clears throat> the sugars lost their minds. First of all, they were, they were compared, oh, Catherine, she's wearing that dress because of Megan. Megan wore this one shoulder dress. Okay, first of all, lots of Harry's exes wore one shoulder dresses way before Megan came along. Second of all, as you can see, Megan has no style of her own. She's copied so many people. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's not what you wear, it's how you wear it. Yep. Now, apparently there was a big something. I'm not going to get into the middle of it. I'm not going to discuss it. Apparently there was a problem with Eurovision. The person who apparently was representing the UK actually said online that she hated the UK. Um, people were up in an uproar. I didn't get into all that. Sorry. Anyway, Catherine was wearing the Queen Mother's Sapphire and Diamond Fringe earrings. We have seen her wear these earrings multiple times before um just yeah i mean 
They are the perfect color to go with the gorgeous blue gown that she was wearing. And we also know that they were a favorite of the Queen Mother. Loved her too. I have to agree with Sabira Lohan. These, these sugars, they're like, oh, yeah, oh, I'm not even gonna go there. Here's Catherine wearing a Jenny Packham one-shouldered outfit in 2011. Here she is wearing the exact same dress as the blue one in white in 2019, and she wore it again last year. There it is in blue. People, <laughs> I'm like, really? You, you, I, I'm agreeing with what this guy says. This is absolutely true. And I look at this and I remember this every time I try to get sucked into a argument with one of the Sussex squad. You can't argue with them because they don't have the brain cell capacity to understand that they are doing what they're accusing us of doing. All right, let's move on now to William. All right, Prince William was at Wembley Stadium in London today for the Vitality Women's FA Cup Final between Chelsea and Manchester United. Now, Prince William is president of the FA, so he went around, he shook hands with both teams, wished them well. Now, it's being reported that they opened up with a very rousing rendition of God Save the King. Now, when it was all over, Prince William presented the Women's FA Cup to Chelsea because they cinched the final in a 1-0 to zero score, which I think is really cool. So the, apparently it was a very tight and close battle, and they were only defeated by one goal. There you go. All right, moving on. All right, once again, I just need to point this out. Sophie was not driving the vehicle that struck that poor 80-year-old woman, but the palace put out a statement. And what the statement said was, and I'm quoting, the Duchess's heartfelt thoughts and prayers are with the injured lady and her family. She is grateful for the swift response by the emergency services and will keep abreast of developments. Further comments at this time would not be appropriate while the incident is being investigated, which I agree. So if everybody will just take a chill pill, it will be handled. Now, moving on with Sophie, it was day two or day three, I believe, of the Royal Windsor Horse Show, and Sophie was there, of course, to support her daughter. Now, interestingly enough, in order to get to this, like, island where she needed to go in order to watch Lady Louise, she had to go across this stream covered in rocks. I don't know that I would have done that. I'm the kind of person I would have slipped and gone right into the water, especially with all the cameras watching her. So, you know, she was taking part in carriage driving, which, you know, is something that she and her grandfather did together. Uh, and Louise was, um, Lady Louise was pictured wearing a beautiful gray riding jacket and she looked lovely as usual. I do also want to just say that, you know, Lady Louise was very protected from the public growing up, really. She was really, you never saw her. And now all of a sudden, she's like bursting forward. I love that. The fact that she's 18 now. And um, yeah. Anyway, I love Sophie's outfit. I love the fact that she didn't slip and fall in the water. Now, also present during the day was Edward, the Duke of Edinburgh, Lady Louise's dad, who, by the way, is president of the Royal Windsor Horse Show, in case I haven't told you that before. He made the presentations for the Household Cavalry Best Turned Out Trooper at the event. Now, in case you're unaware, Edward was invited to become the president after his father passed away and he put out a statement because apparently he's only the fourth president in the show's entire history. And I just love that. And uh, yeah, he's carrying on Philip's legacy. And of course, when the show was over, Sophie had to make her way back across the same slippery rocks and she managed to do it without falling in. Again, something I probably would not have been able to accomplish. Now, I showed you the other day when she was in the carriage she had on her mother's hat. Well, she went ahead and did it again. She uh, was wearing her mother's hat. She was in an old beige look. And they're saying that the scarf that was around her neck was actually Prince Philip's. I just love that. What a, what a nice touch. Anyway, Sophie 
wore that hat in 2019 when she attended a church service with the late Queen Elizabeth at Sandringham. You can get that hat for 99 pounds. Apparently it's still available for purchase. Love it. You guys probably know this, but I'm gonna tell you anyway, Lady Louise was taught to drive a carriage by Prince Philip, who apparently had a passion for carriage driving. So um, he picked that up after he injured his wrist when he was in his 50s and he had to give up polo. So he started doing the carriage driving and then he began doing it competitively. Love it. Moving on. Next up, remember I told you that Mike and Zara went golfing and you know it was all for charity. I love this picture that came up. Anyway, Zara is now out in the public again because she went to competing at the Chatsworth trials on her horse, Classicals Eurostar. So she uh, competed in the Derbyshire event on Saturday, and uh, she looks lovely. Now, we know she's an Olympic silver medalist. Now, it's very obvious when you look at the pictures of Zara with her horse that um, her behavior towards animals is much different than Harry's. She was seen nuzzling the horse. She was helping out the groom. You know, she loves her animals, and uh, it shows. All right, time to move on. All right, next up, Princess Eugenie was at the British College of Osteopathic Medicine, and she went to visit the London campus and teaching clinic where she met with students and staff. She is the patron of the British College uh, there. I, I think that's lovely. Next up, we have the Duke of Kent, who went to a combined cavalry old comrades association at the Cavalry Memorial in Hyde Park. Now, this is where they honor lost soldiers. And what happens is the um, attendees wear these bowler hats as a nod to dress during the 20s when this event first began. Very nice. He wore his five medals on his lapel when he went through London Park. I think that's fabulous. For those of you who are unaware, the Cavalry Memorial is made up of metal that's been melted down and it's the metal from enemy guns that were captured in the First World War. The statue is of the Saint of the Cavalry, Saint George. Very nice. Now, the Duke of Edinburgh was last one who attended this parade. Uh, he was then the Earl of Wessex in 2022. And King Charles walked in this parade in 2019. Um, so, yeah. I think that's very nice. All right, let's move on to the other royals. All right, here we go. So Meghan Markle's friend uh, put out this post. Now, she is the co-founder of a group that's called Alliance of Moms. So apparently Meghan has joined this campaign so that new parents, people that are pregnant, and people that are parenting teenagers in the LA foster care system can have some support. Here's what I think we're gonna find out. I think we're gonna find out in the next tax return that Harry and Meghan made a contribution. And that's why this post went up talking about Meghan and she's so nurturing and warm and open, blah, blah, blah. This model's nine-year-old son died suddenly and tragically. So let's take you back, first of all, to these authentic photos that we've already ripped apart and showed heavy photoshopping in, not to mention the fact that the tree behind them was shown to be added in, including you know all these pictures. That tree is not there. It's added in. And I think you have the same thing in this picture. So here's what I've noticed. First of all, no mention of Harry. Once again, it's just Megan. Harry is nowhere to be found. Number two, she wrote, you're always the first to say yes and support those you love. You are a fierce advocate. When is she advocating? During the one hour a week that she actually works? I mean, yeah. Once again, this is another charity. This is a little shady and I won't give my money to it. There you go. So I happen to agree with Evans Einstein. First of all, the comment section was turned off. Number two, it's another alliance with another white person. She never deals with black people. I've noticed that as well. 
And I also agree, I'll believe in unity when you talk to your dad. This is nothing more than a transactional thing. She's putting out a post because she was given money. And I agree with Megan's mole. She's using the tragedy of somebody else's child's death for attention. Sickening. So here's the next thing. So here's what I think happened. First, Megan's friend put out that post, but it didn't take over the internet because Catherine put out her post about the Eurovision. So what happened? Harry and Megan were suddenly papped for the second time in a week. They decide to go to dinner and somehow the paparazzi just knows that they're there and takes a picture. You guys, you can't be that stupid. I, I mean, this uh, she's trying so hard. So with that, look at this tweet because this is true. The group that Megan signed with is responsible for the trashing of Catherine playing piano and supporting Ukraine. So this, I mean, this is what they're doing. This is what the group is doing now that she hired. They're going to trash Catherine. Now, in the meantime, uh, former labor minister and diarist Chris Mullen is saying that Meghan Markle is basically nuts and her woke California hangups are going to kill her marriage to Prince Harry and that Harry is going to come limping home when that marriage ends in tears because she's the one wearing the pants in the marriage and he's very much second fiddle. Well, we've all seen that. You know, Harry had a lot of girlfriends before he met Meghan Markle. Very interesting. Some made it into the spare, some didn't. So let's just take a quick look at this, okay? First off, you have Natalie Pinkham from 2003. Um, they never confirmed a romantic relationship, but apparently Harry uh, was said to be head over heels about her, but I think she was not that interested in him. Go figure. Next up, you had Cassie Summer. She didn't really date Harry. She just had a one-night thing with Harry, but then she told everybody about it, and that was the end of her. Then you had Carolyn Flack. She made it into the spare because we all know what happened to her. She's deceased at this time by her own hand. And um, Harry went on and tried to use what she did to help him in the spare. I think it was terrible what he did. Next up was Molly King. They apparently dated very briefly. She told people that she did meet Harry and they went out for a drink. And so Harry goes, well, sh she's too open about our relationship and he dumped her. <laughs> now in 2011, you had Florence Bruce. Now apparently um, she broke things off after everybody found out that they were dating due to the quote 24 hour surveillance of the press and paparazzi. What does that tell you? Some people don't want the limelight, but some people do. There's a difference. Next up, Cressida Bonus. And um, in the spare, she made it in and he said, this is the first time I've been able to cry about my mom since the burial. Well, that's not the first time we've heard that one. Uh, she apparently said that he was paranoid and saw paparazzi in places that they weren't. She broke it off with him. Then you had Ellie Goulding, and supposedly they were said to just be friends. Mm -hmm. All right. And lastly, we have Chelsea Davey, who, in my opinion, was the love of Harry's life. He dated her from 2004 to 2011. He even put about her in the spare. She seemed unconcerned with appearances, with propriety, and with royalty, unlike the person he ended up marrying. So as soon as he filed in court about Chelsea Davey, <clears throat> Sussex Squat went nuts, put up all these insulting comments. We do know that he called Chelsea the day before his wedding to say goodbye. You know, no matter how you put it, I, I, I wish they could have worked it out, but it's really nasty that they're attacking a woman simply because Prince Harry mentioned her name. They're not mad at Harry for putting her in this position. They're just mad because her name got mentioned by Harry. I, I, I it, it really, it just doesn't, you can't get your head around that, you know? The truth of the matter is, she also had severe issues with Harry, with his paranoia, probably, you know, with his drug abuse that he's now admitted to. You know, you don't bring up your exes when you're truly a happily married person. I agree. I completely agree with this tweet. She's happily married. She now has a baby. 
She's never once talked about Harry. She's never sold her story to the papers. He's the one who keeps using her name, talking about the love of his life. So who is really the one that's obsessed here? And who is the one who is once again invading somebody else's privacy? I think it says a lot about the Sussex squad when they put up tweets like this. Megan pleaded with Prince William for help and he blatantly told her no. Um, completely forgetting that Harry and Megan sat on the Oprah show and said that they never spoke to anybody. And Harry, the husband, didn't do anything to help his wife. Uh-huh. You know, his case is still going. Now he's claiming that his father's AIDS soul stole the stories. I'm telling you, this court case is going to make him look like more of a fool than he already is. Anyway, at this point, when I see pictures of Harry, I look at some of these photos. It's literally, he looks so defeated, so unhappy, so miserable. But it's like I said before, marry in haste repent in leisure. And I still think that this marriage is going to fail very soon. I got, I got to be honest. I think it's going to fail. Hmm. All right, you guys, you know what I want. Make those comments, write them down, make them good. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of my uploads. If you've already hit the button, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget to go into the description box and you will find the links to my Twitter, Getter, Rumble, email and my physical address in case there's something you want to send to me for those of you who've donated to my coffee fund and through the thanks button thank you so much and as always you guys have a great day